But let's talk a little bit more about the women's series at the weekend. Of course, uh, we mentioned Nolan winning a title, but uh, the question of the week, sponsored by Condor Darts, is who will be the number one seed for the 2024 women's world match play as that race is up? Well, looking at the poll at the moment on Twitter, and you can go and have your say if you haven't already, it's going to be open for the rest of the week. 54% of our listeners are going with Bo Greaves, 44% are going with Fallon Cherick, 2% going with other and whoever that other player is, they're going to need one hell of a run over the next two weekends. But a few of our listeners getting in touch. Henry Joyce saying Sherrick has been by far the better player of the two over the past number of months. Greaves has got complacent, but Sherrick seems back to the levels of motivation she had a year or two ago. Skippy saying Bo will be back with a vengeance. So our listeners very much split on this one and looking at the race to Blackpool, hardly anything to split Fallon Sherrick and Bo Greaves with two weekends of events left to go. Fallon Sherrick, 15,000. £600. She banked five grand at the weekend, two titles, two semi finals. Bo Greaves dropping down to number two, just £100 behind on 15 and a half grand. Pocketed £2,400 at the weekend, a couple of finals, a quarter final, and a last 32. And yeah, how things can change. You go back to last summer, Bo Greaves winning the Women's World Match Play, and then the following weekend did the clean sweep, winning four out of four titles on the Women's Series. And back then we were thinking, who is going to stop this young woman? But since then, we've had 12 women's series across the end of last year. The weekend just gone into, into 2024. And Bo Greaves, she's managed to win just one of them. Meanwhile, Fallon Sherrick, she's found her stride again, it looks like. She's won six of the last nine events. And uh, and in three of those finals, she's beaten Bo Greaves twice in the last league deciders. And then the last event of the weekend on Sunday, a 5-1 win. Bo averaging 76 in that final, Fallon 87. And the Tide... It does appear to be turning somewhat. I think it's a, a combination of Bo's level dropping off by a few points. But I think the main thing here is that Fallon's level has picked up. You go back to 2022, the Women's Series, Bo's return. She averaged 85.81 for the season. Fallon, she was in third place on that list, 80.79 last year. Bo, a little bit lower, 85.58. Fallon, up to level by a few points. She was up to second on the averages, 83.69. And OK, we are only one weekend into the season, but Bo dropping out a couple of points to 83.14. Fallon lifting her game again. She is top of the averages, 86.43. So it's a, a noticeable drop off for Bo because you think only last month we were talking about her debut on the development tour. She was averaging just under that 86. She was making a pair of quarterfinals and we were both waxing lyrical about her after that weekend. So I personally think this is a, a blip for Bo. I expect her to respond when the Women's Series picks up again next month. As for Fallon, it's great signs for her. Her game is really on the up again. And for us as fans, it's an exciting prospect to see these two go at each other. And when they're both at their best, we're certainly going to be in for a treat. So as for the question, I'm going to give the edge to Bo on this one. Just because of the last few years, she's earned enough credit in the bank for me to say that this was an off weekend for her. And who knows, it could well come down to another final between these two. We could get to that last event before the cutoff and it that could be what decides who goes to Blackpool as that number one seed. Well, I guess we're going to have some disagreement here since you decided that you're going to uh, tip out to get back uh, into the number one spot, only a hundred pounds separating them right now after this past weekend. It's a absolutely uh, absurd how close it is, but um I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to say Fallon is going to hold on to the lead that she just took for the first time. Uh, still eight events to go before the cutoff. So it's, well, I mean, even McCour could still uh, close the gap, although maybe it's a little bit too much. But I think Fallon is just playing that little bit better. I, I do think we're going to see Bo Greaves b- uh, bounce back. And you went through the stats of the last few years. I plan to do that same thing. But the big thing I want to focus on is not Bo Greaves' number. Yes, it's down on what it was last year. Yes, it's down on what it was a couple of years ago. It's down a few points. And I think once she gets fully back to her best and gets her confidence fully back, uh, she'll be back averaging closer to an 86 than the 83 that she's just at right now. But it's the Fallon Sherrick number that I want to focus on because the last couple of years have not been her best. You mentioned two years ago when Bo Greaves first came on, Fallon Sherrick barely was over the 80, 80.79. Last year, higher 83.69 and this or 86.43 but i skipped a year there i skipped the very first women's series back in 2021 well that year fountain sherrick averaged 85.54 
a little bit lower than she is through one weekend, but not significantly. One point lower. And when you factor in that overall the standard back then was lower, just by having to play against better players, it's certainly probably a point harder now because there's going to be more legs that you lose without ever getting a look at than there were back then. Uh, so probably her 86 and change now is close to what that 85 and change was three years ago. That means she's basically back where she was when she was at her best, when she made the final of a World Series event where she had been just a few months on from having won two matches at the World Championships and running Chris Doby very close in that third round as well. Fallon Sherrick is playing at least in one weekend back where she was when she was at her best. And, you know, she played very well at Q School this year. Um, I, I think this is... You know, she had a fairly good weekend at the Challenge Tour as well. This is the best we've seen from Fallon Sherrick in some time. After a couple of years in the doldrums, she's back. Bo Greaves, it's the worst we've seen from her. It's still second highest in the averages and still good enough over the course of a weekend to make a pair of finals, coming with pretty close to winning one of them. But there's, there's room for Bo Greaves to grow back and to increase. And right now, as things stand, she's not in the World Championships because she's fourth in the Women's Series through two uh, through, through four events um, and only the top two most likely are qualifying unless things change. That will change. Bo Greaves will move back up. Bo Greaves will win titles. She'll very well will have another weekend where she wins three titles. But I don't think that that's going to happen in the next Women's Series. I'm not even sure it'll happen before the second half of the season. I think Bo Greaves needs to get her confidence back. She needs to get some of that mojo back and maybe a couple more good runs at the development series is in the offing. Uh, that might just be what she needs to get back, but that's not the next weekend in the development series isn't until May. There's still a women's series at weekend before then. And Fallon Sherrick shows no signs of slowing down. You mentioned six of the last nine titles to Fallon Sherrick. Well, she doesn't even need to win uh, six of the, or even five of the next eight to be the top seed Four will likely be enough. Two or three might still be enough, depending on how things go. And I think Fallon Sherrick will do it. So I'm going Fallon Sherrick because she's playing the best we've seen from her. And the best from her is good enough to make a title on television against the best in the world.